topic today is stroke. A stroke occurs when there is a lack or reduced amount of blood flow to the brain, resulting in the death of brain cells due to lack of oxygen and nutrients. There are two major types of stroke, ischemic and hemorrhagic. An ischemic stroke is characterized by the interruption of blood flow in cerebral vessels. Two different subtypes of ischemic stroke can occur due to blood clots. Thrombotic strokes are characterized by a clot forming inside one of the brain arteries. Embolic strokes are caused by a moving blood clot that travels from its origin to the brain. A third type of ischemic stroke is a lacunar stroke and is due to an artery becoming smaller in size. Hemorrhagic strokes occur when a blood vessel breaks and bleeds into brain tissue. Hemorrhagic strokes are less common but have a higher fatality rate. Four major types include subarachnoid, intracerebral, epidural, and subdural bleeds. Now for details about stroke types. The most common type of stroke is an ischemic stroke. It is characterized by interruption of blood flow in cerebral vessels. Examples of causes for ischemic stroke include hemorrhage in other parts of the body that reduces cerebral perfusion or from severe vasodilation. It can also be caused by a blood clot or atherosclerosis. There are two different types of ischemic stroke that can occur due to blood clots, thrombotic stroke and embolic stroke. Thrombotic strokes are characterized by a clot forming inside a brain artery. They more often occur in large vessels. Embolic strokes are caused by a moving blood clot that travels from its origin to the brain. They occur more often in smaller blood vessels. Cerebral emboli mostly originate from a thrombus in the left heart or in an atherosclerotic plaque in carotid arteries. Various cardiac conditions can predispose to formation of emboli that could lead to an embolic stroke. These include rheumatic heart disease, atrial fibrillation, mitral valve disease, recent heart attack, ventricular aneurysm, and bacterial endocarditis. Two other subtypes of stroke include TIAs and silent CNS infarctions. A transient ischemic attack, or TIA, is a temporary disturbance in cerebral blood flow where a penumbra develops and then disappears. Penumbra is the name given to the area of brain tissue that has reduced perfusion. TIAs generally last a few minutes. After the penumbra disappears, there are no signs of any neurological deficit, and the symptoms previously experienced will not remain. TIAs most often occur hours or days before an actual stroke, so seeking medical attention immediately following a possible TIA is very important. TIAs are caused by the same things that cause an ischemic stroke, but the degree of injury is much less. Atherosclerosis is the most common instigator of TIA symptoms. A silent CNS infarction is where there are radiographic signs of a stroke, like on MRI or CT scans, but no obvious symptoms. Individuals who experience a silent stroke are often surprised to be told there are radiographic signs of damage to brain cells. Hemorrhagic strokes occur when a blood vessel breaks and bleeds into brain tissue. Two leading causes are high blood pressure and trauma. Advanced age can also increase the risk. Hemorrhagic strokes are less common compared to ischemic strokes, but have a higher fatality rate. There are many risk factors for stroke, including older age, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, smoking, diabetes, heart disease, family history, coronary artery disease, coagulation disorders, obesity, alcohol abuse, and cocaine use. Alcohol lowers cerebral blood flow and increases atrial fibrillation risk. Cocaine use contributes to vasospasms, enhances platelet activity, increases heart rate, increases body temperature, and increases metabolic rate. Red blood cell disorders like polycythemia and sickle cell disease also increase the risk due to red blood cells blocking capillary beds, perfusing the brain. Hormone replacement therapy 
for women can increase the risk for stroke because estrogen is known to stimulate the liver to increase clotting factor production, making it more likely for a clot to form. CT and MRI scans are important for diagnosing strokes and distinguishing between ischemic and hemorrhagic stroke. They are also used to rule out intracranial lesions that may present with similar symptoms. It is essential to know what type of stroke a patient has before treating it. If it is an ischemic stroke due to a blood clot, clot busters to break up the clot are helpful. However, clot busters are contraindicated in hemorrhagic stroke and would worsen the problem. Tissue plasminogen activator is a clot buster useful in the treatment of some ischemic strokes caused by blood clots. It should be administered to a patient with an acute ischemic stroke within three to four and a half hours after the onset of symptoms. The major complication associated with TPA is intracranial hemorrhage of the infarcted brain. Post-stroke deficits include motor, speech, language, behavioral, sensory, cognitive, and visual defects. They involve the following dysphagia, hemiparesis, spastic paralysis, dysarthria, receptive aphasia, expressive aphasia, depression, anxiety, paresthesia, neuropathic pain, agnosia, hemineglect, apraxia, memory loss, executive dysfunction, impaired problem solving, hemianopia, and monocular blindness. Here's a list of definitions for the post-stroke symptoms related to motor, speech, language, behavioral, sensory, cognitive, and visual deficits. In summary, an ischemic stroke involves a clot that blocks blood flow to an area of the brain. In contrast, hemorrhagic stroke occurs with a ruptured blood vessel that bleeds inside or around brain tissue. Now for questions. Please pause the video and think of your answer. If you answered the following, you are correct. If you answered the following, you are correct. Thanks for watching.